tonight on the South Today. A growing Dunedin school has its eyes on land to expand thanks to the closure of a horse racing track. Midwinter's celebrated in Queenstown with fireworks and festivities along the waterfront. And seasonal celebrations also illuminate Cromwell as thousands kick off a week-long festival. Kia ora, good evening. I'm Dave Gooselink. A slice of the former Forbury Park race course in Dunedin looks set to be used to give St Clair School a bit more space. The Ministry of Education is looking to acquire about half a hectare of the 12 hectare site. Obtaining a slice of heaven. Dunedin's St Clair School is forecasting role growth over the coming years to 450 pupils and needs more land. So the Ministry of Education is moving to acquire half a hectare, or 5,000 square metres, of the former Forbury Park racecourse, so the growing school can spread out. Oh, absolutely. I mean, at this stage, where our concentration is going to be getting uh, usable ground, so uh, just a blank canvas, and, and then uh, you know, we'll work with the community and, and, and the staff in the school and figure out uh, what we need. The board plans to consult with the school community to find out what people want the patch of land to be used for. Information about the planned acquisition was provided by Harness Racing New Zealand, which is involved with the sale process of the Forbury Park grounds. In Dunedin, the South today. The famous Red Bridge on State Highway 8 at Luggett is closing this Wednesday for urgent repairs. Waka Kotahi, the New Zealand Transport Agency, says the need to work on the bridge became more urgent after an inspection last week. Emergency services will be the only ones permitted to cross the Luggett Bridge between 9am and 1pm this Wednesday. The bridge was closed last week for two days while scaffolding was installed to enable access to the structure ahead of this week's repairs. Waka Kitahi says heavy vehicles will need to travel either before 9am or after 1pm. Queenstown has welcomed back winter with fireworks and live bands over the weekend. The four-day festival is a celebration of all the town has to offer in the snowy months, with thousands enjoying the markets, food stalls and live entertainment. Wintertime celebrations in Queenstown. Welcome to Winter 2022 is bringing Queenstown an action-packed weekend from the 7th through to the 10th of July. The annual event, typically known as Winter Festival, has been scaled back for this year's winter season. However, the thrilling celebration is still jam-packed with both free and ticketed events. Destination Queenstown CEO Matt Woods says he is happy to see tourists back in the main town centre. You know, winter is an exciting time here for Queenstown, so to celebrate that is just, it's, it's really important, yeah. The Fun for All festivities aims to showcase and celebrate the Queenstown winter culture and diversity. Many winter-based activities and shows are being hosted by the event, including various markets and live performances. Braving the cold temperatures, people were keen on what the night had to offer. Yeah, it was so beautiful. beautiful. We were watching it, it was so mesmerising and yeah, we loved it. There are still many entertaining events to come, with the resort town filling up with excited tourists and locals alike. In Queenstown, the South today. Dunedin's new hospital could be built up to two metres above the street level. The proposed change in design is to account for flood risks in the future. An assessment on behalf of the Ministry of Health found that the site, which is largely on reclaimed land, faces flooding threats from the Leith, plus stormwater from the local catchment, storm surge and sea level rise. The hospital plans would see the ground level built two metres above the existing surrounding streets. The building would effectively sit on a plinth, requiring stairs and ramps to get to the entrance level. Celebrations for the midwinter in Matariki, Maori New Year, are continuing across the South Island. Matoda Primary School held their own space display in Matariki Bonfire to wrap up the second term. Deputy Principal Sam Walker says pupils focused on learning about space over the term, which timed in well with Matariki. More than 100 people joined pupils and staff for the celebration. Meanwhile in Ashburton, Matariki celebrations were mostly indoors. 
the amount of real that is flourishing through each classroom as these workshops progress and they're doing it in such a fun way that um, they don't even realise that they're learning. Teacher Huya Crawford says the school used Matariki to create ties within the Ashburton community. She believes having Aotearoa celebrate the first Indigenous holiday is a turning point for the country and provides a platform for Tamariki to learn more about Te Ao Māori. Ashburton Intermediate finished their Matariki experience with a performance at the event centre telling stories and Māori legends through a vibrant wearable art show. Cromwell's Light Up Winter Festival kicked off over the weekend, attracting thousands of people. The annual celebration's grown from a two-day format to running over a whole week and is now being held at Cromwell's Big Fruit Reserve. Celebrating winter Cromwell style, this year's Light Up Winter Festival was larger and cooler than ever, with crowds turning up on the opening night to launch more than 800 paper lanterns into the evening sky. The free celebration's now in its sixth year, with live entertainment and all sorts of food and beverages on offer. Just trying to get people out of their houses in the middle of winter and, yeah, get the community together. Other events on the opening night included a hat-making competition as well as a children's disco. There's also an artificial ice rink which is set to stay open until Thursday. It's here all week. Um, you can buy tickets online or you can just show up as well. And it's also open if people want to come along and learn how to do curling. Community involvement is key to the festival's success, with schools, community groups and volunteers all pitching in. All the stall holders are all local as well, and then the people putting it all together are local. And when I'm looking for suppliers and vendors, I always try to use local as well. More than 4,000 people from across the region attended the opening night on Saturday. In Cromwell, the South Today. If I Akine still to come on the South today, Dunedin's Forsyth Bar Stadium gives Irish rugby an historic victory and Gore school students learn business skills while fundraising for a good cause. Great Britain has a collection of varied landscapes and countryside to rival anywhere else in the world. And the best way to see it is to walk. Otago hosts a multitude of social activities, including little walks. Every day the team at Gillian supports grieving families at their time of need from answering your questions to organising a farewell that reflects the wishes of your loved one. We can help. Call Gillian's today. is a planet of extremes, extreme places, and extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual, the most extraordinary, the most extreme.
Welcome back. Students at Gore High School have held a fundraiser for Auckland's Starship Hospital. The teenagers were glad to be raising money for a good cause, but also used the project to gain valuable skills in the worlds of business and commerce. Raising money for a good cause. The sausage sizzle at Gore High School was part of a fundraiser for Auckland Starship Hospital, along with a special basketball competition. The project's part of a two-month career navigation program run by the Graham Dingle Foundation. The pupils managed to get the food for the barbecue and prizes for the basketball competition for free by learning how to communicate with businesses to get sponsorship deals. Through the project they've been making um, community contacts, so the students have been writing up sponsor letters, um, following up those in person um, and making lots of links with the business community here in Gore. The pupils agree they're now better equipped to step out into the world of business and commerce. We've been learning about like teamwork, communication, planning, thinking skills and it's really cool to put them all into like a real life thing. Sponsoring businesses included the warehouse, New World and local butchery Good Meats, with more than $600 raised for Starship Hospital. In Gore, the South today. Saturday's rugby test between the All Blacks and Ireland was a win for the city, even if the hosts lost to the visitors for the first time on New Zealand soil. A crowd of more than 28,000 people packed into Forsyth Bar Stadium. Some happy with the result, others not so much. It wasn't the spectacular win which home team fans were wanting, but Irish eyes were definitely smiling at Forsyth Bar Stadium in Dunedin on Saturday night when the Irish team beat New Zealand at home for the first time. Anytime you create a little bit of history, um, it, it means a lot. Um, you know, it, it's a very, very special day for, for everyone in the country. This week we, we dealt some other cards, literally, in, in Test Match Rugby. And you don't always get what you want. And we didn't get what we wanted last night. And so, you know, how we adapt around that. So I don't think it's a, a true reflection of, of where we're at, but it's a true reflection of Test Match Rugby. And um, in that we've got to be smarter. At the end of 80 minutes of rugby, the Irish team beat the All Blacks 23-12. to an outcome which delighted the touring team. The victorious Irish team's coach clearly proud of the squad. Uh, inspiring, uh, inspiring people back home and um, these lads, they keep turning up, you know, they, they keep turning up and, and, um, and, and knocking down doors and, uh, you know, I suppose the, 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 the most special thing about tonight is that um, nobody, no, no other Irish side will get the chance to do that again, will they, you know? From the outset, the Irish team, along with fans under the roof, were in fine voice, many hoping to make history, which at the end of the match they did, becoming the first Irish side to beat the All Blacks in New Zealand in more than a century of competition. In Dunedin, the South today. A Central Otago woman is preparing to fly to the UK to compete at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. Pam Walker will compete in para bowls and says she's received a lot of support from the community. While winning a medal is always a possibility, the Lauder based athlete simply aiming to play at the top of her ability. I want to play my best and that's really what I want you know what to do. It's like I'm in a team, it's a peers partnership and we've been working on our team, our team often on the green and we work together well and so we just want to play to our full potential. Walker is set to fly out this Sunday joining the rest of New Zealand's athletes and para-athletes in Birmingham. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Sinclair School has its eyes on expansion to meet its growing role with a slice of land next door thanks to the closure of Forbury Park Racetrack. Midwinter's celebrated in Queenstown as the ski season ramps up with fireworks, festivities and live entertainment along the waterfront. And seasonal celebrations have also illuminated Cromwell as thousands kick off a week-long festival which has grown in popularity in the central Otago community. And now taking a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT, we welcome Deputy Editor Craig Page. Craig. Good evening. Good evening. Um, 
Uh, yeah, a call from Grey Power in Dunedin now for people to ensure they're following COVID health guidelines. Um, this is prompted by, the, I guess, the weekend's festivities around the city, um, concern at the lack of face masks at the All Blacks match, um, and also reports uh, of what appeared to be visitors wandering around the city and into supermarkets without face masks over the weekend. Um, Certainly a lot more cases around town. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's quite, President Jo Miller's quite infuriated by it all. She's, um, she said particularly with rises, you know, the COVID numbers rising, that we should be looking to protect our elderly in particular. Um, she's aware of a lot of people who are reluctant to leave their homes at the moment because of it. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's just a general warning out there and, uh, you know, a request for people. Um, we're looking ahead to the New Zealand Ice Swimming Champs, which are going to be held at uh, Alexandra this Saturday. <laughs> Outdoor pools with a temperature of 4.5 degrees. Um, 26 people taking part, um, and before they can take part, they've got to be declared fit by a doctor as well. So wow. quite a stringent routine there. A variety of events from 100 metres to 1,000 metres. And it's a bit of a growing trend around the world, actually. 76 countries involved now. Wow, um, no thanks. Yeah. No, not me either. <laughs> but um, and they're aiming to turn into a Winter Olympic sport at some oh, wow. stage down the track. So, um, yeah, uh, no wetsuits, just traditional swimming attire. So, oh, brave. Yes, yeah, very yeah. brave. And just quickly with sport, we've got the Otago NPC squad is due to be unveiled first thing tomorrow. We'll have that in our newspaper. Um, sort of club rugby finishing up this weekend in three weeks. We're into the NPC. So, wow, yeah. it gets around quickly. It certainly does. Craig Page, thank you. Thank you. Now taking a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by MolMap. Looking at the situation and a long spell of cold, wet weather begins tonight. It'll last most of the week. Expect plenty of snow inland and plenty of breeze about the coasts. Heading to the top of the South Island, heavy rain in Nelson with strong northeasterlies and a high of 13. Greymouth has rain in gusty northeasterlies and 14. Christchurch can expect strong easterlies, heavy rain and a high of 10 degrees. Travelling south, strong easterlies and heavy rain across South Canterbury and North Otago. A high of 9 in Ashburton with 8 in Timaru and Ormadu. Travelling westwards to the southern lake, central lakes, expect snow here tomorrow and strong southeasterlies. It'll peak at 4 degrees in Queenstown, 5 in Wanaka. Alexandra reaches 7 degrees. Heading down south and windy here too. Gusty southeasterlies with showers later on. Highs of 8 degrees for Balclutha, Gore and the Catlins. Down to Invercargill, cloud increasing and going down to 5 degrees tonight. Cloudy and cold tomorrow with freshening southeasterly winds, rain developing after dark, a high of 8 and a low of 5. And on Wednesday, cloudy with some rain and strong gusty southeasterly winds. Very cold temperatures, a high of 7, a low of 6 degrees. And for Dunedin, cloudy but mostly dry tonight, a high of 6 degrees. Overcast tomorrow, light showers during the morning, but periods of rain developing during the afternoon, becoming heavy later, a high of 8 and a low of 7. And for Wednesday, overcast with periods of rain and strong cold southerly winds, a high of 7 and a low of 6 degrees. And that's the news this Monday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz and you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. We'll see you again tomorrow. Kakite a popo. Public Interest Journalism, funded through New Zealand On Air.